Welcome to Old Guy Gaming Network. Today we're going to take a quick flight out to the USS New Jersey uh, in this episode of Interesting Places to Visit in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, the USS New Jersey, uh, hull number BV-62, is an Iowa-class battleship. Uh, she was the second ship of the United States Navy to be named after the U.S. state of New Jersey. She was often referred to fondly as the Big J. New Jersey earned more battle stars for combat actions uh, than the other three completed Iowa-class battleships. Those would be Iowa, uh, BD-61, Missouri, BD-63, and Wisconsin, BD-64. She's also the only one of the four battleships that provided gunfire support during the Vietnam War. During World War II, New Jersey shelled targets on Guam and Okinawa. Uh, she screened aircraft carriers conducting raids in the Marshall Islands. During the Korean War, she was involved in raids up and down the North Korean coast, after which she was decommissioned into the U.S. Navy Reserve Fleet, better known as the Mothball Fleet. <clears throat> she was briefly reactivated in 1968 sent to Vietnam to support U.S. trips before returning to the Mothball Fleet in 69. Reactivated once more in the 1980s as part of Ronald Reagan's 600-ship Navy program, the New Jersey was modernized to carry missiles uh, and modern radars and electronics and recommissioned for service in 1983. Uh, she participated in U.S. operations during the Lebanese Civil War. Now, Reactivating the eye was very controversial. <coughs> there were many who claimed that battleships were obsolete. You know, World War II showed us that. And that they had no place in modern naval warfare. But the Russians had a class of ship called the Kirovs, which were called they were they're classified as battle cruisers uh, just because they are they're massive <laughs> they're really really big and they carry a ton uh, of weaponry so when the Iowas were brought back into service um, you know obviously their first primary mission is going to be gunfire support for an amphibious operation you know the 16 inch guns can do that better than anything um, but they also made her a missile platform. Uh, she was able to carry um, both Tomahawk and Harpoon uh, cruise missiles. Now the Harpoon is a dedicated um, anti-ship missile. She was able to carry 16 of those. The Tomahawks, uh, they are could be used for land attack, both conventional and nuclear options uh, for warheads, but there was also a Tomahawk anti-ship variant as well, which gave the reactivated Iowa's an extremely long range punch in the anti-surface role. Um, she carried 32 Tomahawks and armored box launchers and 16 harpoons and quad canister launchers. Um, with her reactivation, yeah, they removed all the, you know, the old school uh, World War II AA guns, all the, you know, the 40 millimeter mounts and 20 millimeter mounts for close-in 
defense, they gave her four what they call Sea Whiz, which are uh, Gatlin guns uh, that are radar, radar controlled and basically can lock on, engage, and shoot down uh, incoming missiles. Now, the New Jersey was built right here in Philadelphia. It was right here in the Philadelphia Naval Yard. Currently there, you can see the Kennedy. That's the old Kennedy, which is awaiting scrapping. While the new Kennedy, which is a Ford-class carrier, is being built down in Newport News. So you can see some of the dry docks for ship repair. Now, as I said, the New Jersey, she was an Iowa-class battleship. The Iowa class was a class of six fast battleships ordered by the United States Navy in 1939 and 1940. They were initially intended to intercept fast capital ships, such as the Japanese Congo class, while, being, while also being capable of serving in their traditional battle line along uh, slower battleships and act as its fast wind. Uh, the Iowa class was designed to meet the second London Naval Trees Escalator Clause limit of 45,000 long tons standard displacement. Four vessels, the Iowa, New Jersey, Missouri, and Wisconsin, were completed with two more, the Illinois and the Kentucky, and they were laid down but canceled in 1945 and 58 respectively before completion, and both hulls were scrapped in 58 and 59. The four-hour class ships were the last battleships commissioned by the U.S. Navy. All older U.S. battleships were decommissioned by 1947 and stricken from the Naval Register uh, by 1963. Uh, between the mid-40s and early 1990s, the Iowa class battleships fought in four major U.S. wars. Uh, in the Pacific Theater of World War II, they primarily served as fast escorts for Essex-class carriers of the Fast, Car fast Carrier Task Force and also shelled Japanese positions. Uh, during the Korean War, the battleships provided naval gunfire support for United Nations forces, and in 1968, the New Jersey shelled Viet Cong or Vietnam People's Army forces in the Vietnam War. During Operation Desert Storm in 1991, Missouri and Wisconsin fired missiles and 16-inch gun uh, ammunition at Iraqi targets. Costly to maintain, the battleships were decommissioned during the post-Cold War drawdown in the early 1990s. All four were initially removed from the naval uh, vessel register. but the United States Congress compelled the Navy to reinstate two of them on the grounds that existing uh, naval gunfire support would be inadequate for amphibious operations. Uh, this resulted in a lengthy debate over whether the battleships should have a role in the modern Navy. Ultimately, all four ships were stricken from the Naval Vessel Register and released for donation to nonprofit organizations. With the transfer of Iowa in 2012, all four are part of nonprofit maritime museums across the United States. So, the New Jersey is docked here in Camden. The Wisconsin, she's uh, docked in downtown Norfolk. Uh, the Iowa, you know, she's out in Los Angeles, in the port of Los Angeles. And the Missouri is in Pearl Harbor.
Now, when I was in the Navy, I served on New Jersey sister ship, USS Iowa. And I was going to say the uh, while I was in, I got to go on the I got to go on the Wisconsin. Uh, and I also actually got to go on the Missouri when she was in Pearl Harbor for the 50th anniversary. I actually did tour New Jersey oh, about a decade ago. So I've actually been on all four Iowa class battleships. Now the ships themselves, and they were the largest battleships ever built by the United States. Only one battleship uh, class was bigger as far as terms of law displacement would be the Japanese Yamato class. Uh, the ships themselves um, are 887 feet, 3 inches at the waterline, or overall, excuse me. Uh, and they have a beam of 108 feet, 2 inches. Uh, one of the design, even I was gonna say, one of the design restrictions we had was um, they still had to be able to fit through the Panama Canal. So her beam was the set at the absolute maximum. Uh, she displaced 48,592 tons standard and 58,460 tons full load. She drafts 37 feet 2 inches. Now the Iowa class, they had the largest steam power plants ever put. I don't know about largest, but I will say they had the most powerful steam power plants ever put on a U.S. Navy warship. Uh, she had the total of 212,000 shafts horsepower, which could drive this massive ship through the water at speeds of 33 knots. Now, a little known fact is, is that on a light load, uh, she's actually capable of hitting 35 knots. She's got four screws and four geared steam turbines that powered her. She also carried a massive amount of fuel. Uh, she had a range of 14,890 nautical miles or 27,580 kilometers at 15 knots. In World War II, her complement was uh, 2,700 sailors. Uh, once she was reactivated in the 1980s, they managed to get that down to about 1,800. Now, the main armament of these beasts is the 16-inch 50 caliber naval artillery gun organized into three triple turrets. Um, now, just to head this off, I get this all the time. People say, 50 caliber, that's not wrong. There's 16-inch guns. Uh, you know, they think of 50 caliber machine guns. Well, in naval artillery, and I think it's actually our, just artillery in general, caliber is a function of barrel length, not the size of the round. Now, to determine barrel size, you take the 16 inches and you multiply it by 50. And that will tell you exactly how long the barrels are from breached tip. They were the largest guns ever put on a U.S. Navy ship. Uh, the only guns that were bigger ever used were the Japanese 18.1 inch gun on the Yamato class. Um, the two previous classes, the North Carolina class and the South Dakota class, they also had 16 inch guns but they were of 45 caliber. So their barrels were about six inches, I mean six feet uh, shorter. Now they both fired the same 
2,700 pound super heavy, arm, super heavy armor piercing projectile, uh, but the Iowas were capable of firing it at a greater range. They could fire those uh, shells out to about 23 nautical miles. Now, one of the really cool things is the Iowas, they had uh, very early versions of what computers, what we use every day now. Uh, they were all analog and vacuum tube and things like that, and they were massive. They took up several decks, but these computers were actually capable of plotting a firing solution. Uh, and once that firing solution was plotted, it was updated in real time. So you would input items into the computer like how fast you're going, what your course is, what the sea state is, uh, what the barometric pressure is, uh, wind speed, temperature of the, the gunpowder, uh, how many rounds have been fired through each barrel before or since the last time it was relined. Um, trying to think of some of the other things. Uh, oh, your targets, course and speed. Uh, if you're shooting at a naval target. Um, and so once that computer locked, you know, developed that firing solution, uh, you could deliver accurate gunfire even if you were doing figure eights. You could do figure eights, you could speed up, you could slow down. Didn't make a difference. The computer compensated for that in real time. <coughs> if the target you were shooting at, so say it was a hypothetical engagement between the Iowa and the Yamato. Wouldn't matter if the Yamato was speeding up, slowing down, making course changes. Once that computer had that fire control solution, um, she could land rounds on target with the first salvo. The only factor would be her natural gun dispersion. And so when they reactivated <clears throat> the Iowas in the 80s, they actually kept that the World War II fire control for the guns. Now they said, well, you know, we could obviously make a, a new system using a, like a modern computer. It would be much smaller, but it couldn't do the job any better. Another thing I like to... Um, tweak the nose of flat earth believers is um, as part of the fire control solution the fire in the main battery you actually had to account for both the curvature and the rotation of the earth um, and make those corrections uh, if you wanted to hit your target and so we would have these things literally it's called a range card and they were pre-calculated formulas based off of what uh, latitude you were at you know the relation of your the relation of the target off your ship's bow and their range and you could quickly compute how many feet you needed to add or subtract due to the curvature and the rotation of the earth in order to hit your target The New Jersey Museum, uh, they actually have their own YouTube channel. I highly recommend visiting them. Um, there is a ton of great content there. Battleship curator Ryan Shemansky. Uh, I've never met the gentleman, but you know, I've been watching his videos so long, I swear I feel like I know him. And uh, you know, he is a great host and a what you know, a fountain of information about all sorts of things, Navy. So definitely head over to the YouTube channel, subscribe if you haven't, and you know, really enjoy uh, the content that they provide. Uh, of course, if you can you know, make some donations you know, to the ship, you know, these things aren't cheap to maintain. <coughs> to maintain. Uh, so you know, hey, visit the ship store, get some merch, uh, you know, and help support the ship.
Now, when we're flying overhead here, so obviously there's the main one of the main battery guns. That's turret three. And there's turret two. And turret one. Back here you can see her armored box launchers for her tomahawks. Her harpoon launchers would be right about here. And she still retained three of the five inch guns uh, out of the five from her World War II configuration. The four Sea Wiz launchers are going to be the what we call the close-in weapon systems. There's going to be like one here, one on the other side. I think one there, one on the other side. So two per side. Ah, I need my brain wanders. So when they were reactivating the islands, there's a lot of controversy over. You know, should we bring them back? Do they have a place in the modern Navy? You know, aren't battleships obsolete? The Russians had a class of ships called the Kirovs, which are massive. They, they call them battle cruisers. Technically, they aren't. They just give them that because they are so big. And they carry a lot of armament. And so the Iowas, you know, they basically turned them into a missile platform. Uh, and they were sort of designed to counter the Kirovs, or intended to counter the Kirovs. But one of the other factors <clears throat> that came down to reactivating them was, was cost. So. Reagan was trying to get the Navy up to 600 ships. So I don't know where he came up with that number, but hey, you know, they wanted they wanted to massively expand the Navy. And a cost study was done, and I don't know the figures exactly, but uh, they could reactivate an Iowa-class battleship for the cost of a single Oliver Hazard Perry-class frigate. So the firepower disparity there was quite large. And so, you know, as long as the Iowas were escorted and protected, uh, they, like I said, they brought with them a lot of firepower in both the anti-surface uh, and, the, and, or, and the shore bombardment role. Uh, and, like I said, for a relative bargain, Considering, like I said, the, the amount of firepower you get for that for the same cost as uh, Oliver has. Perry class frigate. <clears throat> now, while you are visiting the New Jersey, if you decide to go, bring a lunch. Make a day out of it. Because right across the river is another very famous ship. That would be the USS Olympia. Now the USS Olympia uh, is a protected cruiser that saw service in the United States Navy from a commissioning in 1895 until 1922. The vessel became famous as the flagship of Commodore George Dewey at the Battle of Manila Bay in the Spanish-American War. In 1898, the ship was decommissioned after returning to the United States in 1899, but was returned to service in 1902. Uh, she served until World War I as a training ship for naval cadets and as a floating barracks in Charleston, South Carolina. In 1917, she was mobilized again for war service, patrolling the American coast and escorting transport ships.
The Olympia was decommissioned for the last time in December 1922, placed in reserve. By 1957, the U.S. Navy succeeded title to the Cruiser Olympia Association, which restored the ship to her 1898 configuration. Since then, uh, Olympia has been a museum ship in Philadelphia, uh, where it is now part of the Independent Seaport Museum. Olympia was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1966. The Olympia is the oldest uh, steel American warship still afloat. There's also a Gato class submarine dock next to her. Uh, she's uh, been heavily, you know, modernized to like, you know, I don't know the exact standards or whatever, but you know, she's not quite World War II configuration. But um, I've been on when I visited the New Jersey, I kind of went over the bridge, visited the Olympia and the submarine. Uh, the Olympia is an absolute fascinating tour um, it's crazy to look at the difference between you know how sailors lived you know in the late 1800s early 1900s and how they lived in World War II and even in the you know in the 80s uh, the officers you know back then they were uh, it was they were almost considered like the aristocracy the officers quarters on the Olympia uh, they're actually better than you know anything that they have today uh, all the, the furniture is hand carved uh, I believe it's teak but I mean it is absolutely the officers quarters is gorgeous I mean even you know ensigns their cabins are absolutely astonishingly beautiful um, the enlisted guys not so much <laughs> they all they, you know, hung in hammocks, 200 to a room, uh, packed in like sardines. But man, if you were an officer back in the day, uh, yeah, you lived it good. But yeah, I would highly recommend uh, visiting the Olympia as well. Uh, the Olympia herself, she's in dire need of repairs, which they're doing. And so... You know, if you can also donate to the USS Olympia Association, you know, visit the store, buy some merch, do whatever you can to support her because uh, she is an amazing piece of history that is, you know, not as in danger of being lost as she once was, but she still needs our help uh, if we want to keep her around. Well, that's going to conclude today's video of interesting places to visit. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your comments below. And until next time, have a wonderful day.